Hi guys, it's Kira and Kirsten. Hi everyone. And we are here with Let's Paint Live. And we have a very special edition tonight. We are actually hosting from Michael's Community Classroom. And this is a brand new program that they have that if you are a maker or a DIYer, they are opening their classroom to you for you to be able to teach and inspire other people, other makers and DIYers. So if you want more information on that, go to michaels.com slash community classroom to get more info on that. And we have a lot to tell you actually. There's a lot of exciting things going on. So we're here with our Let's Paint Live where we teach you to paint a painting in just about an hour. And we've been doing this for almost two years, we were just talking, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm, it's wonderful. So thank you everybody who has joined us and posted the paintings that you've done. We love to see all your work and continue to do that tonight as you're painting along or after. Or if you have comments or questions while we're live, we'll try to answer those for you. Also, this is a part of our bigger program, Let's Paint. So if you love this, check out platonline.com slash let's paint because we have an entire on-demand free education program for you where you're going to find tons and tons of paintings. We have, um, you know, just this year, 24 paintings. We have Donna Dewberry and Andy Jones, if you've been following us, teaching you everything from flowers of the month and there's a baby cow and um, beach scenes and all kinds of really fun content. So tonight we are teaching um, May wildflowers, so this beautiful spring landscape that Kirsten created featuring Martha Stewart paint. So this is really exciting. And so Kirsten's going to get us started and we'll check back with everybody. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for coming. Um, if you had purchased your supplies and you're painting with us live now, let me show you what you're going to need. First, you're going to need an 11 by 14 canvas, always the basics. Make sure you have either palette paper or a paper plate some paper towels, a water basin, and then we are using Martha Stewart multi-service craft paint. This paint is amazing. It's perfect for any family project you could ever do, and it's multi-surface, so it's great for fabric, for wood, for canvas. And you are going to need snowball, pink taffy, strawberry, mango, green apple, Swing Set Green, Deep Sea Blue, <laughs> and Aqua. They're great color names also. You did a really good job. No, it's like they're <laughs> great color names, like jelly beans. Um, so you are going, the first thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna create a pattern on our canvas. And I want you guys all to use a pencil, but, do, and do not be confused by this, I am going to use a black Sharpie marker just so it's really easy for you guys to see while you're watching it live. But again, if you come in late, make sure you're not using a Sharpie marker because that will not be good. Make sure you're using a pencil. And just a little tip when you're using a pencil is do not push hard on your canvas. We are gonna cover up all of our lines, but again, you wanna just barely push down to create your pattern. Okay. So let's get started. First, we're going to create our pattern. Okay, so I'm going to work from the left to the right. And what I'm going to kind of do is number each flower. So there'll be a one, a two, a three, just so it's very easy and very self-explanatory how we're going to build it. And also, I'm not going to do any intimidating measuring. I'm not going to do four inches, three and a half inches. I'm kind of going to use my fingers. Maybe we go two inches to the left or two fingers to the left, three fingers to the left. I just want this to be really easy and not intimidating. So starting on the left, I'm going to go about three fingers from the left and I am going to do a straight line, a little bit curving left. Do we maybe want to show um, one more time the image? Yeah, if you were that's just a great idea. tuning in, here I have one here. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go, flying it in. If you're just tuning in, we are painting May Wildflowers tonight with Kirsten featuring Martha Stewart paint here at Michael's. And so Kirsten is just getting started. So if you were a few minutes late and you were painting with us live or you can paint on demand later in your free time, just wanted you to see what you're gonna be painting. Link is in the bio. And the link is in the bio to the project. So follow along on the Facebook Live or check out platonline.com slash let's paint for more information if you're checking this out after the live. So sorry to interrupt you, Kim. No, I that's just want perfect. Everybody to see what they're I doing. I know, and maybe what I, I could do. If we can scoot it in. I could bring that in. Yeah, that's Does that perfect. help a little bit? Okay. Yeah, so we're great. again going to work from left to right, and so, and again, if you're just coming in, do not do your pattern with a sharpie. Do it with a pencil. So your first flower is a straight line for the stem, and then I want you to just do about a quarter size oval for the flower, 
and a tiny little leaf. Now, when you do your leaf, do not attach it to your stem. Have it just a little bit off of your stem because a great detail I'm going to teach you to do is how to attach that to your stem. Flower number two, you'll see that next blue one, is right next to that, and you're going to do a straight line going up a little over halfway. And then at the top, again, you're going to do about a quarter size oval. And please know when you're making these patter patterns, they do not have to be perfect. It's just a guide for placing your paint. So then you're going to do a little leaf. And again, don't have it touch your stem because you're going to learn how to do that. Your third flower is this adorable little yellow wildflower. So you're going to go about three fingers over. And starting there, you are going to go up and to the left, crossing over that second flower. Then you're going to do a little line with a V at the top. And do another little line with a V at the top. That's where you're going to place your flowers. And then another one there and a few more at the bottom. So that's your third flower. Our fourth flower, let me make sure you can see it, is this big purple one. So going about a finger over and again curving a little bit to the left like the wind has blown your flower. You're going to go all the way, almost all the way to the top. Maybe leaving about an inch from the top. So then about the size of your fingerprint, I want you to just do ovals, again, not touching the stem, and do about five or six going down each side of that stem. And you guys have fun with this. If you want a little shorter flower, a longer flower, you know, do what is best for you. Do what you like on your canvas. So then those will be your flower buds, but then you'll see these tiny little leaves. We're not going to draw all of those, but I want you to do about four smaller ovals, three to four, going down that stem. These tiny little leaves, we're not going to create a pattern, but we're going to add those with a detail brush. Okay, now we're going on to our next flower, about two fingers over, and again, you're going to curve a little bit to the right and go a little bit over halfway. You're going to do a little half circle at the top, and then just very loose petals. You're going to add your leaf, and again, don't touch your stem because we'll connect that. Everything good out there? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to do this fern, and for that one, I'm going to go a good bit, maybe three fingers over to the right. And on that one, just kind of a little loose curve. Again, if that's halfway. Oh, reminder, everybody, if you guys are just checking in, I am making my pattern with a Sharpie. Do not do that. Make sure you're creating your pattern with a, with a pencil. Okay, so again, for your fern, just a little curve in that, just to keep it, keep it very, very natural. And then again, not touching your stem, I want you to do little leaf patterns, which is basically a circle and a circle that connects, and go all the way down that stem. And know that your pattern is, again, it's just a guide. So it does not have to be perfect. It's not going to be like we're doing a color book painting and you're coloring this exactly. It's just a guide on where to do your brush strokes. So I'm going to go all the way down, getting a little bit smaller as I get to the bottom. Okay. Now we're on to this last, I'm not sure if you guys can yeah, see that. Can you over. see it? There we go. Now we're going to do this last pink flower. And so I'm just going to go about a finger. And again, just a nice natural curve. So that's the first one with the bud. For the bud, I just want you to do a little half circle and then just an irregular little oval at the top. Two little leaves. And then coming off of that stem, a little less than half, I want you to just go a little bit to the right. Another half circle and then another little flower. Okay, one more little fern, make sure, okay, there's that. So just a soft little curve to the right, and then you're going to do those little flower, or those little leaves again. Not touching the stem, but just going on both sides of that stem. Getting a little bit smaller at the bottom. And you can see mine are just very loose and very sketchy. Again, it's all going to be covered up. Okay, and then our last little guy, the little yellow one, and that I'm just going to do a little line that goes a little bit to the left, 
I'm going to put a V at the top there, a little stem that goes that way with another V, and another one there. So that should be the pattern that you need for your wild wildflower canvas. Yes. Everyone's got that? Then I am going to cheat a little and magically <laughs> appears my canvas with pencil. So it is hard to see the pencil lines, so yeah, that's why we it drew is. it in. But, um, Do you think you can see it now? Is that... Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. okay. If you can't see, let us know if you're painting. Because um, we can, you know what, we could bring this one back out. Well, you know what, or they've got, right now you guys have your pattern, so yeah. I think it'll be easy to follow because yeah. you've already got your pattern. Yeah, and, and again, you can pause this and go back, rewind. You can watch uh -huh. on demand if you aren't painting with us live, which is great. We have a whole library of our Let's Paint videos, and then this Perfect. also will be available on our YouTube channel after. Perfect. So you can go back and take your time and do your drawings. So. Sure, sure. And, but don't, don't worry about it because remember, yep. we are going to cover up all of our lines. I just want you guys to have a great pattern applied for those of you that are painting with us live now. Good? Okay. Yeah. So now we are going to get started painting. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create, and again, I'm going to bring this in. We are going to create this watercolor wash. The Martha Stewart paint is wonderful for all surfaces, but it's also great for so many different techniques. This is a great watercolor technique that we are going to do first to create that background behind your flowers. So to do that, using your largest brush in the set, which this is a number eight flat brush, what I want you to do is using water only, I want you to wet, and let me see if you guys can see that. Can you see the glare of the water? All I am doing is wetting the canvas. I don't want big puddles. I don't want drips dripping off the side, but you really can get in there. Just getting it damp. Yeah, you're just getting it damp. A very random pattern. Um, not stripes though and not swirls. Random meaning behind all of your stems and behind all of your flowers, but not following that pattern exactly. So you're almost washing and brushing behind those patterns that you created. So, and on mine, what I did is, I did a little more watercolor, you'll see, on the left. You'll see it's the whole side on the left, and then it kind of works its way down behind the flowers to the right. So that's the look that I'm gonna do. So on the left, I'm gonna wet that whole side. And a great tip is when you're using this number eight flat brush, use the whole side of the brush. So when you, you apply the water, don't brush up and down on your chisel. Apply your water by using the side of that brush. That just allows you to get better coverage. Now remember, you don't want to soak it. You don't want drips and puddles. But you also don't want straight lines. So you want to make sure that there's kind of a good amount of coverage connecting all of the areas in between your stems. So wet that. And if you want more of a watercolor look, add water all over your canvas. If you want less, just do a little bit on the bottom. Whatever is whatever you like. I think that's so what's so great about the Martha Stewart multi-surface paint is that it is an acrylic paint, but with, by adding the water, you're gonna get a different effect. And like Absolutely. you said, it's so versatile, and you're gonna show so many different ways that Absolutely. you can use this paint, even on one project. You're gonna uh -huh. show blending the colors, yep. the watercolor effect, yep. splattering. So you're yep. gonna learn a lot just with this. Um, it is using the wonderful paint. paint. And the greatest thing is when you mix water with it to use it like we are today, you still get those vibrant colors. It doesn't wash out at all. Yeah, the colors are beautiful. They're beautiful. Okay, so. You can kind of tell where your water is just from the light. And again, if you've got any giant puddle areas, definitely dip your paper towel on there to get that off, but you want it pretty wet. Okay, so once that is done, using that same brush, I am gonna get a little bit of the Swing Set Green onto my palette, and make sure you put this kind of over to the edge, but not too close, because we're gonna be adding water to this, and I don't want it to run off your palette. And then a little bit of green apple. And then what I want you to do is I want you to mix water with that. And it's pretty much going to be equal parts water to equal parts paint. You want to get a very thin, watery consistency. 
and you want to do that in your dark green first which is your swing set green okay so once you've got that half water half paint and I just pulled the water into the side of my paint so that I've got that there then using the side of your brush again you are just going to brush that dark green in very loose random strokes into your water on your canvas and again don't try to create a pattern don't do dark green and follow your pencil lines don't do dark green just on the bottom just very randomly put that dark green on the wet areas of your canvas and go right over those pencil marks because as you can tell you can still see those for when we get to painting the flowers you can go over them? You can go right over the pencils, yes. Because then you'll still be able to see it for when we do all the detail painting. If your color is too dark, add a little bit of water, move that around. But the more water that you add, the lighter the color, and the less water you add, the darker the color. But don't forget, you want a watercolor wash, so don't use this paint right out of the bottle for this effect. But I am just very randomly adding the dark, and then I'm going to do the same thing with that lighter green. I'm going to add water to the edge of my paint. So it's about equal parts water to equal part paint. Stir that up with your brush. And then again, very random, very loose. I'm going to go in there in different areas. Mix it in with the dark green. Add some water if you want a different look. A great tip is you can add water to the edges and almost brush it from paint to white canvas. And what happens then is it just softens that line, that watercolor look, so it softens that line between the white canvas and the green. If you want just one color, you could use one green, but I like the difference where these two colors kind of meet and it just gives you a very soft textured background for your wildflowers. Yeah, and while you're doing that, Kirsten, maybe we could go to the audience that we have here in the Michaels Community Classroom where we are hosting our Let's Paint Live and check out all the uh, watercolor effects that we're creating with the Martha Stewart paint. So again, it could be as loose as you want or as tight as you want. You Absolutely. Can add more green, less green. And again, you're painting right over the lines that you drew. So that's just a guide now at this point. Yep, you should still be able to see your pencils, pencil marks, and just add as much as you want. And again, add some water. If your paint is not moving around like you want it to, add a little bit of water to your brush and that'll get it moving. Okay, I think mine is all that I want on there. Maybe a little bit up there. And I'm just going to show everybody again our May Wildflowers painting that we are working on tonight. So Kirsten is teaching us how to paint May Wildflowers with Martha Stewart Paint, part of our Let's Paint program. And we are here in the Michaels Community Classroom tonight. We're really excited for everybody to be painting with the Martha Stewart Paint. And we're getting, I'm always saying, getting in the mood for spring and summer because I love warm oh, weather. I so I think we're finally yes, there here. There. And yes. we've got these beautiful bright colors and these florals. So very excited tonight. So if you're just tuning in, we're painting May Wildflowers. And you can watch this on demand and paint along with us on our YouTube channel after our live is over. And if you are painting along, we hope you got caught up as Kirsten showed you how to do this beautiful watercolor background with the Martha Stewart multi-surface paint. Okay, so everyone should have their background done. If here again, because we're doing the watercolor technique, your, your, your canvas is definitely wet. If you've got some really wet areas, again, you just wanna take that paper towel and you just wanna softly get just big puddles. Don't, don't do your entire canvas because that will dry very quick. That's one of the great things about acrylic is it does dry very quick. But if you've just got some really wet areas, dab your paper towel in that and get that off. Okay, so the next thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna base coat. And we are gonna base coat each flower again like we did our pattern we're going to work from the left and we're going to go right base coating the areas that we're going to paint on so i wonder if i should have that there again i could leave that right there maybe as a guide but you guys have definitely got your pattern and got your background done 
So using that same number eight flat brush, clean that off in your water and always use a, dried, a dryer brush. Don't go right out of your water onto your canvas. Wash your brush and then dry it off on your paper towel. So we are going to need the aqua. So put a little bit of that on your palette. You're gonna need a little bit of the strawberry. You are gonna need a little bit of the pink taffy. They're on the back of the bottle. And you're gonna need a little bit of the snowball. <laughs> and you know what, the yellow, don't put that on your palette yet. We're gonna need that at the very end. Okay, so again, starting on the left, we're gonna do these two blue wildflowers. So using your number eight flat brush, I want you to dip into that light blue, and you are really just gonna base coat that circle. Go a little bit larger than your pattern, so that way you've covered up your pencil. And look at the coverage that you get. We went from a watercolor wash to a solid, beautiful, vivid color with the same paint. Flower number two, you're gonna just paint right over that pattern. And if you've got a little bit of the watercolor on there, do not worry, paint right over that. You'll still get great coverage for your base coat. So those are, the first two are the blue. Now that third flower is a little bit different. It doesn't have big flower areas, so we're gonna skip over him. He's gonna be something we do with the detail brush. So your third flower, which is this big purple one, I'm gonna sneak that in which is this big purple one. This is something fun we're gonna do. We're going to mix that purple. So to mix that purple, I am gonna get my number four round brush and on my palette, I am gonna, and you know what? Now is when we need the deep sea blue. So put a little bit of that dark blue on your palette. Okay, so to mix this purple, I'm gonna scoop a little bit of the red and move it to a different section. I'm gonna scoop a little bit of that dark blue and I am gonna mix that up and I'm gonna get a little bit more red. It's usually equal parts red, equal parts blue and then the magic is I'm gonna get a little bit of white to soften that color. So you should get a really pretty dirty purple color. And if you want it to be a little bit redder, you just pick up more of the red. If you want it to be a little bit more like a dark navy plum color, pick up a little bit more of the blue. And the same thing with the white. If you want to soften it just a little bit more, add a little bit more. Mix that on your palette with your brush, rolling in and out of that, but making sure that color is mixed really well. Okay, you should have a really nice, dirty purple color. So that is our base coat for our fourth flower. And those are all your little ovals. So all I'm gonna do is base coat those little ovals using my round brush. And when you're using your round brush, I like to stay on the tip of the brush. We used the side of our brush when we were doing that watercolor effect because we wanted a lot of coverage. But for these little flower petals, you just want to stay on the tip of that round brush. Now when you're covering up your pattern, don't forget, go a little bit bigger than your pattern so that your pencil is gone. And do not worry about making it perfect because you want, you want those irregular edges because that gives character to your little wildflower. Which brush did you switch? I switched to the number four round brush. Gonna pick up a little bit more paint. Now remember those little tiny circles that you did, those are leaves. So when we base coat with green, leave those alone, we're gonna base coat those green. So that's that flower. Once you're done with that, always wash off your brush in water and dry that off. I'm gonna go back and get Yours is not. Oh. <laughs> I need more red. A little bit more red. So now I'm going back to the number eight flat brush. Again, wash it, but dry it on your, on your paper towel. And for this one, I'm gonna go into the pink taffy. 
Am I going too fast? Is it, are you guys? A little too fast. Little too fast. I'm going to slow, slow down. down. So you, sorry, guys. Get caught up on your purple flowers. Now, and for the purple, it's whatever color purple that you like. Again, a darker purple is more blue and more of a magenta purple is more red. And then a touch of white is what lightens it and brightens it a little bit. So I'm sure your purple out there is perfect. Did it work? Okay. So you guys, I have to tell everybody in Facebook land, Aniva <laughs> was here at Michael's and she popped her head in the classroom and said, what are you doing? Wonderful. And we said, we're having a painting party. Do you want to join? So and there she is. She is here. Will, she needs her Facebook uh, live debut. Live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, oh, we love it. Paint. Yeah, and the paint is fabulous. It goes on so nicely. I feel the artistic creative. Oh, I love it. She's that. totally hired. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm, Are you a I'm painter? I hand paint on fabrics and okay. t-shirts and clothing. I'm a fashion designer. Uh huh. So I'm. I I love the fact that this is another application that I, I can oh, use. Oh, wonderful! To paint my I love it. I'm glad you're so here tonight. Thank you so much for telling yeah, me. Yeah, of course. We're glad you stopped. Thank Very you. exciting. Okay, everyone's catching up a little bit now. Yes. Okay, I don't want to go too fast. So now we are going to skip to this big pink flower. You'll see it right here. We're going to base coat that one. We are going to use the pink taffy. And all you're going to do on that is don't do that little half circle that at, that's at the bottom. That is part of the stem. But you, with just very loose, very irregular edges, using that flat brush, you are just going to base coat that entire area. And see how the coverage is so perfect? Your pencil, every base coat, your pencil should already be gone. That's a great thing about these acrylic paints is it covers your pattern perfectly. So we're going to skip that big fern, whoops, and we're going to go to these next two flowers, which are also pink, and those are pink taffy, and that is just an irregular little oval. And then for this one, just a cute little, it's almost like a heart with jagged edges. So you're going to just base coat that again with very loose edges because that's the character within the wildflowers so there you go now when you base coat make sure you get it completely covered but again don't have a bunch of paint balled up on the edges or big um, areas that will take a long time to dry one coat is perfect but again you want to brush that out and make sure that there's not big areas staying on there Okay, so all of the colored petals should be base coated. Now what we are gonna do is we are going to base coat everything that is green. So if you added water to all of your green, get some more of the swing set green on your palette and do not add any water to that. That's your darker green and that is swing set green. Okay, so I am gonna use the number two flat brush. There we go. And the reason I'm using that is a flat brush has a very sharp chiseled edge, which allows you to get some detail. Okay, so again, dipping in your dark green, not the one that we use for our wash with water, but just our dark green. I'm gonna go back to the left and we are gonna base coat all of our leaves. And using this flat brush, stay on your chisel edge, which means stay on the tip. That creates a nice hard line and then just fill in the center. Now don't create a stem, don't move ahead. We're gonna create a stem at the end that connects everything together. I'm gonna to move to my second little leaf that's on that blue flower. I'm gonna do two strokes, staying on my chisel. When you stay on your chisel, you get that nice detailed point on the end of each leaf. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more green. And I'm gonna to go to these little ovals underneath our purple flower. And again, I'm just going to do two chisel edge strokes to create that tiny leaf pattern going down the stem of that purple wildflower. Pick up paint when you need it. Okay, then we're going to move on to the pink one, which is that large leaf right there, covering up my pencil. And I'm going to base coat that. Okay, same brush. A flat brush for that, yes, we're using a flat brush. It's the number two. It's a little bit smaller. I think it's actually the smallest one in the set. 
So it's a number two flat brush. And you don't want to load too much paint on it. You want to dip in the paint, but maybe brush a little bit to the side on your palette because that keeps your chisel edge nice and flat. Okay, then going on to our fern, again, I'm going to start on the chisel and do a little stroke on both sides of the leaf. See how that chisel keeps that point really nice on both ends? And then I'm going to fill that in. That's giving us a perfect base coat on that little fern. And you're even using Martha Stewart brushes. I am, yes. This is a brush set by Martha Stewart, and it has a variety of brushes, which is great for a project like this. There we go. So you're just going to work all the way down your fern with that same dark green, filling that in. And again, this is a base coat. So you're going to be covering it with some details, with some shading and some highlighting, so your edges do not have to be perfect. You're just basically starting out the color for each leaf. Okay, I'm going to go all the way down that. Remember, they get a little bit smaller as you get to the bottom. I'm going to do the other side. But stay on that chisel edge makes it so much easier when you're doing little detailed work. Okay. All the way down that little fern. I love this green. It's so bright and beautiful for spring. Okay. Almost done. All the way to the bottom. That's a big fern. There we go. Okay. So that little guy should be base coated. Then I'm going to move on to this little pink flower. And he's just got those two little leaves up at the top. Again, staying on that chisel edge. I'm going to fill those in. I'm going to do that little half circle where the flower meets the stem. And you know what? I forgot to get that one. So sneak back to your big flower and base coat that little oval where your flower meets your stem. Okay, one more little fern. And again, just on that chisel edge, it allows you to do small strokes and larger strokes. I'm gonna base coat each, each little leaf. And don't forget, they shouldn't be, if they are, it's okay, but they shouldn't be touching your stem because we're going to connect those with our little liner brush at the very end. Okay, so that's what your canvas should look like. It should have everything base coated. Is it going good? Okay, so always clean off your brush. Now we get to finally get to the fun stuff. Okay, so we are gonna use that same flat brush. I'm gonna dry that off on my paper towel after I clean it. The little one, yep, it's the number two, the number two flat brush. Get all the water out of it. Make sure your chisel edge is nice. I always run my fingers over it just to make sure it's a nice little edge. Yeah, do we want to show the painting oh, again? Absolutely. Just Got to some, see where I know, we're we headed. We need to get this in the, somehow figure this out. So here, I'm going to stick it right over, upside oh, down. Up, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're live. so your painting is not looking like this yet. We're only on the base, base coat. The magic is about to start. We are going to get all of these details on all of our different flowers with the stuff that we're going to do next. Great. So okay. this is May Wildflowers. Give everybody a chance to get caught up on all their greens, yep. all their leaves that they were filling in. Yep. And you made it look so simple and well, easy. Well, the base coat and is again, always easy. And again, you can always pause, rewind, and watch this on demand. Yep. So you can take your time filling in all those leaves. Yep. And then we're going to get to the fun detail part. Okay. Sounds perfect. Okay. So if everyone's got everything base coated, now what we're going to do, again, we're going to work from the left to the right. So I am going to start on these little blue flowers. And on those, what we are going to do is using our number two flat brush, again, I am going to pick up the dark blue, which is the deep sea blue. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that on my brush. I'm going to go in the paint and I'll remove just a little bit of it on my palette. 
You just don't want a bunch of paint on that brush. So using the chisel, starting on the chisel and just kind of pulling against the brush. So you start on the chisel and then you just lay the, bris lay the brush flat. Can you see that? You start on the tip and then you basically just push the brush, brush down. Whew, that's a mouthful. Start on the chisel and then just push the brush down. So you're basically just laying on the edge of that chisel. But that gives you that great little stroke that creates details within your flower. So again, chisel and push down. And you are just going to keep doing that randomly on the bottom third of that blue flower. Go a little bit outside of your base coat because again, that just creates character and gives some dimension. Okay. So I have to give a quick shout out. We'll stay on the painting while Kirsten's working. But um, Sarah, I'm not going to pronounce her last name right. She's riding along, watching in the car. She said, no, I'm not driving. You do what is necessary. <laughs> so she had to tune in and watch this painting. So oh, I, I love, love that she is watching us as she's in a car. That is dedication. Absolutely. And Sarah, I hope you go ahead and paint May Wildflowers when you get to your destination or later this weekend when you have some time. And post hashtag Let's Paint, Plaid Let's Paint. And we would also love to see what everybody else is making. We are looking at everybody's comments and we love everybody tuning in and seeing where you're from and what you're interested in. So I just had to give a quick I shout out for the that. dedication of our viewers. I absolutely. So while you were doing that, so I did the dark blue first, then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the light blue. Do not wash your brush in between because if you've got that dark blue on your brush, you actually are going to want those two colors to come together to create one more shade that's a little bit in between. So you are just going to do that same brush stroke, picking up the light only, above the dark blue, starting on your chisel and just laying down that brush. They're like little hash marks that just create all those individual petals. So I'm going to do that and again go outside of your pattern so you get all of that detail. Then again, do not clean your brush. Just wipe it on your paper towel. Do not clean it in water. I'm going to pick up the white and I'm going to do the same thing starting on my chisel and I'm going to create those little strokes right over the blue. And don't work it too much or you'll get a solid color. You want to have the different colors on there. You want to have the dark blue going into the light blue and then going into the white and go larger than your pattern and your base coat, don't forget, because that's what gives you all of that great detail. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing, starting on the chisel and then just kind of laying down the side of that brush, creating those individual petals. I'm just gonna lay that down across the top of the blue flower. And if you want more of the darker blue, go back and add some of that if you want it to be a little bit lighter you can add more of the white. Make this flower whatever is best for you. But see how with just that one brush and three colors, you get all of that detail. Okay, so those are your little blue flowers. Those should be done and ready. Now I'm actually gonna clean my brush in the water. I'm gonna dry that off and I'm gonna set that to the side. Now what we are gonna use is our number six flat brush and that's just your medium size brush. So you should still have on your palette that purple color that you made. Make sure you've got that. If not, make a little bit more. And what we are gonna do on just the edge of that is we are gonna add a little bit of the pink, the pink taffy, and a little bit of the white. Mixing colors is so much fun. Okay, so we've got a little bit of that on the side of our base coat purple. Go in that paint and then take some of it off. Now what we're going to do on each of our little ovals is again, starting on our chisel on the top of that oval, we are going to just make a few little hash marks and I'm going to add a little bit more white. I want a little lighter color in there. Okay, so starting at the top, I'm going to do this oval right here. Starting at the top of that oval, I'm going to start on my chisel and I'm just going to scratch back a little bit. Starting at the top of the oval, I'm just going to scratch some details onto the top of each circle. Get into that paint when you need more. 
And I'm going to pull that on each oval. You're basically softening the edge of the oval to create each flower. You don't want that oval shape anymore. That was just your base coat. So I'm using just my chisel edge and I'm just staying on that chisel and I'm just scratching into the oval and pulling that to soften those edges. Okay. I'm going to go back in that paint and I'm going to add a little bit more pink. Again, I'm mixing on the edge of my base coat, so I've always got some more paint to make. I'm going to pull the pink in there. I'm going to pull a little bit more white. Make this as light or as dark as you want. If you want it to be more pink, add a little bit more of that into your purple. Make sure it's mixed really well. Okay, then again, using just my chisel, I'm going to pull a few more straight strokes over each base coat. See how that's just creating all of that dimension, that shading? It's a very loose, very free wildflower. So have fun with that. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more of the pink. But you're softening your edge. Your pencil should be all gone. Get a little bit more when you need it. Okay, so that's that. That's that purple wildflower. Is it going good out there? Yeah. Okay, now our little pink flowers. And on these, we're going to use the same brush. We're going to wash it in the water and dry it off. And that, again, is that number six flat brush. Okay, we're going to go into the red, which is the strawberry. And all we are going to do is brush from the stem up using the entire flat edge. We are going to just brush up into the pink, feathering that out the with the red. We're going to do the same thing on that little pink bud. We're just going to feather that from where the flower meets the stem and the same on that other little bud and just feather that out using the entire flat edge. Okay? Do not clean your brush in the water, but just dry it off on the paper towel. And we are going to pick up the white, and we are going to do the same thing from the top, pulling into the red. So you're going to follow your edge, your base coat, which you'll be picking up a little bit of that, and then you're going to feather that into the red, blending all of those colors all at the same time. So again, you're going to put the white towards the top, and you're going to just pull into the red, mixing and shading all three of those colors at the same time. A little bit more white. I'm going to go on my big flower. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm going to just lightly feather that towards the stem, towards the red. And pick up more paint as you need it. That's the biggest of the three flowers and just pull that in, creating all of that dimension. Starting at the top and pull that in. See how you get all of that detail, the highlights? That's what's great about these paints. The colors don't mix and muddy. They all stay so vibrant even though you're blending them together. Okay, so then your little pink flower should have all of their shading and highlighting. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we are going to do that same thing for our leaves. So, let's see, number six flat brush, wash it in the water, dry it off. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to make sure the green, which is the green apple, the lighter of the two, make sure you've got some that does not have water mixed with it. I'm just going to take a little bit from my palette and move it away from the water. The water was great for the background, but we don't want to use water anymore on our painting. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. And again, all that does is soften the color. If you want that bright green, don't add the white. But I like to soften it just a little bit. So get paint on your brush, but then get a little bit off on your palette so you don't have a big puddle. And I'm going to go back to my left side, and I am just going to do one half of that leaf. So I'm going to stay on my chisel, I'm going to pull down, and I'm just going to highlight one side of my leaf. Again, I'm going to stay on my chisel, 
I'm going to go follow the top edge. I'm going to get a little bit more paint. I'm going to follow the top edge and just fill in half of that leaf. On these little guys, really all you're going to do, because they're so small, is you're going to stay on your chisel and just drag and pull one stroke over the dark green. Pick up paint as you need it, and you're just going to pull on each little leaf. That one's got a little bit of an irregular border from the watercolor, but that's actually kind of nice. Okay, keep working from left to right all of the patterns that were the leaves. So on this one, I'm going to stay on my chisel, and I'm going to just create a lighter side for that leaf. And because this is a real loose, abstract watercolor, there's really no right or wrong. We're just creating dimension with the lighter and the darker colors. Okay, so now for the fern, I'm going to get a little bit more white to soften that green. I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to start on my chisel edge, and I'm going to pull down on each side of that leaf going all the way down the stems. And Kirsten, while you are finishing your leaves, okay. we are gonna take a peek at some of the paintings in the Michaels Community Classroom. We are hosting here live tonight. And everybody out there watching, and after you finish your painting, if you're watching live or on demand later, don't forget to hashtag your painting, hashtag plaid crafts, hashtag let's paint, because we can't wait to see um, what you're making and creating out there with our whole entire Let's Paint program. And we also like to feature our fan projects on Fridays. So make sure you check out our Instagram because your painting and project could be featured Friday on our Instagram account. So that's kind of exciting for everybody. Yeah, so we've got some beautiful stuff. Like these are so gorgeous. The colors are beautiful because they're so talented. Your teacher must be really good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The paint does all the work. Yeah, it's really beautiful. So again, if you are just tuning in or you've been painting along, we are painting May Wildflowers with Martha Stewart paint tonight. We are creating this beautiful, um, it's got a couple techniques. It's got watercolor, it's got blending of the colors, and we're going to do some splatter at the end to finish off the painting. So here is the finished painting again, if you can see that. So beautiful colors, these beautiful wildflowers. We've got your blues, your purples, and your pinks. Just really beautiful for spring, get you in the mood for all the warm weather and the wildflowers Finally. and allergies. No, we don't <laughs> so want that. Kirsten is finishing up her leaves. Um, so we just wanted to show everybody what everybody's making out in the audience. I know they look so good out there. Okay, so you should really have a really good feeling for all the shading and the highlighting. Your flowers should be beautiful. You should have dimension in all of your petals. All of your leaves, you should have some shading, some highlighting, just a little bit of color on all of the base coated areas that we did first. So now what we are gonna do, which ties everything together, is we are gonna use this number one round brush. It's the longest round brush in the set. And what we are gonna do, is using our dark green. Here again, we're mixing these colors, but just a little bit. We're gonna take a little bit of the green and move that onto our palette, and we're gonna take a little bit of the dark blue. Not adding water to this, because we want it to be the consistency of the paint in the bottle, but see how that little bit of dark blue just darkens that green just enough for our stems. Mix that up really good with that round brush. Once it's mixed, Roll your bristles out of that paint because see how that tip gets really pointy? That's what you want. You don't want to flatten down that tip because you've got too much paint. You want to roll right out of that paint so that your tip is nice and thin. Okay, so using that darker green that we just created, again, we're going to start on the left. We are going to follow our pattern that we created with the pencil and cover right over that. And when you're using this round brush, stay right on the tip and just do a long stroke. As long as you've got the paint in there, pick up more when you need to, but just a long, even stroke to create that beautiful stem. This is where we are gonna attach our leaves. So roll in and out of the paint, starting in the middle of the leaf, pull that and attach that to your stem. So again, we're gonna do that big blue flower, starting at the top. 
you're going to stay on that point of the brush, picking up paint when you need it. You're just going to drag that following that pattern that you made. Oh, got to get more paint. And you're going to drag all the way down. So that's a good tip. When you start to see it drag, you want yes. to reload your brush. Yes. When you start to see that texture of the canvas, that means you need a little bit more paint. So then again, for all of your leaves, start in the middle of the leaf and then pull that down onto the stem. That just creates another little bit of detail. So then this third little flower that we totally neglected because he's all stem, we are going to go right in there and we're going to do the V's and do those long stems. And don't forget, if you're dragging, pick up a little bit more paint. And you are just going to connect that with very simple strokes using that darker green with just a touch of the blue. You want to be very light with this brush or else your strokes will get really thick. Staying just on the tip of the brush. We're going to do all of our little stems for this little guy. They're just V's and lines. It's very easy when you look at each flower individually. Okay. Do that. Go all the way down. Then, for this big purple guy, I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to go all the way down the center of those little buds. Down through the leaves, the little ones that you painted. Picking up a lot of paint for this one. Whoops, there we go. Dragging a little bit, but that's okay. Should be covering up your pencil completely. It, the acrylic paint is wonderful for that. Then I'm going to attach each little leaf. And again, just stay right on the tip of that brush because that makes a nice thin line. I am going to do staying on, let me get it, roll that paint off, staying on the tip of my brush. I'm going to do a little stroke on each side of the purple and then pull that onto the stem. And again, just very loose and easy, just a way to attach it so that each little flower's got a little base. Hey, Go. Kara, mm -hmm. Tanya says this is actually calming and relaxing to watch. I love that. Oh, that's wonderful. So calming and relaxing watching <laughs> this, which it is. It's, it it's is. a stress relief. It's time to yourself. It's time to be with friends, Absolutely. have a painting party. Um, just take a minute and paint. It's so good for you. Uh -huh. I love that, what you Absolutely. get out of that. So it's feeding your creativity, and um, it's really beautiful. It is calming. I'm staring here, sitting here <laughs> watching you paint. It's gorgeous. Stay with me. Yeah. Don't go to sleep. So I love that you are all enjoying it, watching it on Facebook, and relaxing and watching oh, Kirsten I love and that. the team paint. It's a great thing to do. So now these little details. If you guys remember, we did not... We did not create a pattern for these tiny little leaves. So all you're going to do is on your stem is staying on the tip of your round brush. You're just going to do a few little leaves. Don't make them exactly the same, but just randomly go down that stem. Just again to give it a little bit more character. Okay, you're going to go back over into your dark green. Do that, la that stem on your long pink flower. Go all the way down, picking up paint when you need it all the way down to attach you're going to start in the middle of your leaf and attach that I think I'm going to make a little bit more paint for my fern I'm running out so again I'm going to do that dark green with just a touch of the dark blue to darken that up a little just a touch stir that up good with your brush and don't forget roll out of that so the tip of your round brush is very pointy roll out of that Okay, so my, for my fern, first thing, I'm going to do the stem, working all the way down that pencil we created, pencil pattern, and then it's so nice when it all comes together. So when you attach each little leaf to the stem, it just creates that final finished look and it just looks so nice. Going from the center of each leaf on to the main stem. Picking up paint as you need it. Adding just a little bit more dimension with that stem and that vein inside the leaf. Okay, moving on to this next one. 
I'm going to attach those little leaves. I'm going to create that stem going all the way down. I'm going to do my larger flower. Oh, make sure you roll out of there. My chisel or my tip was getting a little thick. That's because I didn't roll out of the paint. Pick up paint, but then roll out of it. Same with our little fern. You're going to do your stem, and then you're going to attach each little leaf. It's so simple to create that detail with this little round brush. And then there's another one of our little, our little yellow ones that were totally neglected. They're just stems. <laughs> so you're going to do your little V, connect that to the main stem, drag that in. There we go. Okay, so now what we are going to do, just a little tip when using a brush, you don't always have to use the brush. You can use the handle. So these cute little yellow flowers, all we are going to do is finally use our mango, put a little bit of that yellow, the mango, on your palette. Just a little bit. You don't need much. And then using the end of your brush, your brush handle, this is a great little technique. All you're going to do is dip in the paint. Don't wipe it off. Dip in the paint. And then dip on the end of your stem. And that just simply creates a perfect little dot. You can use that for borders, you can use it for flowers, you can use it for so many different things when you're painting. So you're actually using the end of the paintbrush, uh -huh. you're using the handle to create yeah. the dots. Almost like a little stamp, but you get a perfect circle and you get full coverage. Okay. So you're just putting a little dot on the end of each of your little stems. So do that to your big flower and then go over and do that on this little one on the end. And if you want to add a little bit of dimension to that, you can always dip right into the white and dip right over the yellow. And you can do that not on every one, but you can do it just to add some character to that little yellow flower. And you dip right in the white. You can see that on the end of the brush. And then just dip that over. You can do all of them or you can do some of them. But it's just adding a little highlight to that little yellow flower. You dip in and you dip out. It's just a great way to use both ends of your brush. Always clean that off because you'll be doing that again next time. Okay, so, and this is just something that I love to do to the, at, the end of a, at, at the end of a painting. It just adds character. It kind of gives that vintage. You know, back when watercolor prints, the vintage ones, they had that splatter, that aged look. So for that, we are going to splatter. And we are going to use that dark color green that we had, that we had made for our stems using any brush, but I'm going to use the number four. I am going to dip in that and I am going to add water to that dark green. So that's the dark green that we used with the stem. I'm going to add water so it's equal parts water, equal parts paint. And I'm going to get a little bit more blue actually because I want it even darker. So see I've got that beautiful dark green with a lot of water. Okay, so again, you don't want a bunch of paint dripping off of your brush, but you want to have all of those bristles saturated. So get that on there, but still kind of roll out of it. Okay, then this is a little trick to make splattering very controlled so you don't splatter your entire table. Taking two brushes, whichever two, but the one that you have loaded, you want to hold the handle at the very end. And then, almost like a little drumstick, <laughs> you are going to tap. See how you get that controlled? Pick up the paint as you need it. But you get a very controlled splatter, which is just a nice little detail to create that vintage look in a watercolor. See how? Can you see that? But you just get a very controlled splatter, which just adds character. I love that and add more or less, whatever you like. But if you just hold it at the end, and you kind of treat it like, I guess, a little drum. Yeah, that's such a great stick. way to create splatter without the yes. mess and the extra tools. Yes, because really it's kind of tricky. Yeah. Because you can't, yeah, there's no other way to do it, but this using the brush set, you can do all of that. So, that is your finished wildflower painting. Yeah. 
Thank you, Kirsten. Thank Thanks, you. everybody, for joining us. We hope everybody enjoyed May Wildflowers with Martha Stewart Paints. We have this beautiful painting, and we can't, see, can't wait to see everybody's painting that they're completing or going to complete. Don't forget to hashtag your finished painting with hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag let's paint. We're really excited to see what you've done out there. Thanks again to Michael's Community Classroom for hosting us. Thank you, Martha Stewart Paint. Yep. Thank you, um, Kirsten and the rest of the team. And we have a preview actually of next month's painting, which will be June 6th at 7.30 p.m. We'll be live again, and you will learn to paint under the sea. So this is a great, fun summer starfish painting. So stay tuned. The event listing will go up live right after this live stream, and you can RSVP to that. So we'll be doing June 6th at 7.30 p.m. We'll be doing Under the Sea. So thanks again, everybody. We hope you enjoyed, and we can't, see to, can't wait to see what you've created.